Hi, I'm Megan, and today I'm going to be talking about the importance of temporal structure in working memory. Some of the work in the 1970s described single neuron persistent activity as a primary mechanism for maintaining working memory information in the primate prefrontal cortex. However, during the same period of time, contradicting evidence was also being collected. The Schaefer group discovered that it was more common to find cells that only responded during one part of the delay period. And indeed, only 5% of cells actually fired persistently during the entire delay. Going back to this literature, we started thinking that this temporal precision of the activity may be meaningful. More recent technology has allowed for the recording of hundreds of neurons, which has uncovered temporal patterns of firing that were previously undetectable. Sequential activity, for example, has been identified in various species and brain regions, in accordance with a population of neurons fire precisely in temporal order. Since these sequences rely on transiently active neurons, like the ones identified in the monkey prefrontal cortex during working memory, we hypothesize that precise temporal sequences underlie population persistent activity during working memory in primates. And to test this, we developed a complex working memory task that takes place in a virtual environment. The task set up this picture on the left and targets in the nine possible locations within the task arena are shown beside it. During the task, a target presented in one of these nine locations and then disappeared during a two second delay period. And Wilson then had to navigate to the queued location during the response period. We recorded neural activity during this task using two 96 channel Utah arrays implanted in two rhesus macaques in the lateral prefrontal cortex. We analyzed the responses of 7,116 isolated units. Many neurons displayed sharp bursts of action potentials occurring consistently in time between trials. For example, this neuron fires around the 4,000 millisecond mark in almost every trial for a certain target location. We can also calculate the standard deviation to see how consistently this neuron fires around this time. So we calculated the standard deviations for all neurons and then shuffled the timing of neurons and calculated the random standard deviations. We compared the real distribution of standard deviations versus the shuffled distribution for correct and incorrect trials. And we noticed that these distributions were overlapping for incorrect trials, suggesting that neurons were not firing any more consistently than we would expect them to by chance. To quantify this, we calculated the difference between distribution means for correct and incorrect trials for all sessions. We found that the distributions were more overlapping in incorrect trials. So after determining that single neurons have precise temporal activity, which is related to behavior, we started looking for evidence of sequences in the neural data. When ordered by peak firing time, sharp bursts of activity form clear bands spanning the duration of the trial. We can see this pattern clearly looking at the population raster for a single trial. And importantly, we wanted to know whether these sequences were different between remembered target locations. This example shows all neurons firing for one trial for a target on the right of the arena. The sequential activity pattern is clear throughout the trial. This second example shows the same neurons indexed to the same order during a trial where the target is on the left. The same sequential activity is obviously not present. This made us think that this pattern of activity could be meaningful. So obviously we next wanted to see whether these sequences were meaningful during the delay period, and that is whether they're related to memory content and behavior. So we developed a novel computational method to analyze spike sequences across trials. This method works by representing individual sequences as complex valued vectors and performs dimensionality reduction on the resulting covariance matrix. It allows for efficient, unsupervised discovery of consistent spike patterns across trials without including any information about firing rate. Each circle here represents a cluster centroid for a different condition. And as you can see, they're clearly separable based on temporal sequence structure alone. And to relate these findings with the task variables, we calculated correlations between the distance between cluster centroid and the physical distance between target locations in the arena. This plot shows the correlation coefficients for each session by the individual lines compared to the shuffle correlation distributions. And these correlation values are then higher than predicted by chance. On average, correlations were higher for correct trials than incorrect trials, indicating that the relationship between temporal sequences and remember target location is related to task performance. Finally, we wanted to look at possible mechanisms underlying sequential activity in working memory. So we injected animals with some anesthetic doses of ketamine, which is an NMDA receptor blocker. Ketamine is known to cause precise working memory deficits and did in fact decrease performance of our task. After injection, we found that neurons fired less consistently in time from trial to trial. We also saw that the correlation between conditions, centroid distances, and physical target distances decreased, indicating that sequences were less predictive of remembered target location. And combined, these effects suggest that NMDA receptor dysfunction disrupts behaviorally relevant sequences during working memory. This could possibly be due to decreased local circuit inhibition, which we plan to explore in the future. Thank you to everyone who helped me with this project.